Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthiers Workbench. Now, I know that a couple of episodes ago, I said that I probably wasn't going to be doing any updates on my Highline Guitar CNC machine because the machine was done and it was working pretty well. But I've made a few slight changes in it, and I've also noticed there's been quite a bit of interest in uh, whether or not I'm going to be offering a set of plans for this machine. So I wanted to answer some of those questions and explain a few of the changes that I've made. Now, you'll remember when I was talking about the electronic uh, motion and control system that I chose for this machine, that I used a four axis CNC kit that I purchased online. And that kit included a parallel port breakout board. And initially what my plan was I wanted to connect my PC, which is just this cheap laptop, HP laptop. I wanted to connect it to the breakout board uh, with a USB cable. Now, of course, there's no provision for USB connection with this breakout board. And initially, my plan was to use a uh, USB to DB25 uh, connector adapter that plugs into this. And Unfortunately, that adapter is really expensive, and it requires that you use some expensive motion control software on top of that. So then I thought, well, why not use an Arduino Uno to connect to the breakout board? Because the Arduino Uno has a USB connection. So I just wanted to be able to connect the uh, Arduino Uno to the breakout board, and then I could plug my, my laptop into... USB connection. Well, the problem with that is uh, I had to find a way to connect this to this. And um, what I found was I did a search and I came across a guy on Tindy, which is a website where, you're, where a lot of folks sell their uh, technology based uh, hobby type kits. And uh, this, this gentleman on Tindy was selling a product called the DB25 Adapter Shield. And this is a, it's a, it's a kit that you have to solder together yourself. And it simply plugs into the Arduino Uno. And then that allows you to um, connect to the parallel port breakout board just by simply plugging the cable into the breakout board and then the other end of the cable into the adapter. And so I ordered it, I put it together, but initially I was having some trouble getting it to work. I, I, I simply couldn't get any kind of communications um, from the uh, Arduino through the breakout board to the machine. And my initial thought was perhaps the pinout for the Arduino and the shield didn't match the pinout for my breakout board. But the guy who sells this kit, this DB25 kit, his name is Ron Light. I'm going to put some links down in the description below so you can go check out his products. He explained to me that the pinout shouldn't be an issue. The pinout should be fine. The problem is <laughs> my soldering. And I thought I had done a pretty good job of soldering, but when I went back in and looked closely at the board, I noticed there were a couple of joints where this uh, DB25 adapter is soldered to the board where I had a few cold joints. And even though they tested out fine in terms of continuity, with CNC communications, because of how fragile the massive number of pulses are that are sent to, this, to the uh, stepper drivers, if there's any kind of a weakness in that in a connection, it can cause problems. And uh, Ron was was pretty convinced that uh, a couple of bad solder joints is all it would take to cause some problems. So what I did was I removed the breakout the, the uh, DB25 adapter and. Instead, what I did was I went out and picked up a couple of these inexpensive uh, screw shields. And they simply plug in to the Arduino so that all I need to do 
is wire my stepper drivers and my limit switches directly to the board and that way I can plug my PC in and then everything is, is good to go. I'm, I can communicate with the machine. The problem with this is you really don't know where you're supposed to plug the wires in. And the, the, the screw shield as well as the Arduino board itself, all the, the pins and ports are numbered. So what you have to do is you have to find a uh, Arduino pinout diagram and that's specific to CNC and more importantly specific to the version of Gerbil that is installed on the, the Arduino so that you know where to plug everything in. And I went ahead and went through that trouble and it, you know, it took a couple of hours of, of doing the research and then figuring out where to plug everything in. And once I had my drivers plugged in and my limit switches plugged in, it worked perfect. I couldn't believe it. I plugged my laptop in, everything communicated, and I was able to um, run my G-code. Everything worked fine. I did have one issue, and I'll, I'll bring that up in a minute. But at about the same time that I was doing this, Ron contacted me and said, hey, I've got another product that I'd like to send you and see if that will work for your type of CNC machine. And what he sent me was, um, he, it's called the ST25 breakout board. And it is essentially just like a screw shield. It simply attaches to the top of the Arduino Uno, and then you attach, you connect all the stepper drivers and limit switches directly to um, the screw terminals. And then it can connect to the laptop and everything should communicate. So it's basically the same as a screw shield. The one difference is, is everything is marked out clearly as to what goes where, and that makes it a lot easier to use. It's also a kit, just like the uh, DB25 board, so you do have to solder it together, but it only costs like eight bucks. So it's about half the cost of some of these screw shields. And he sent one to me, I soldered it together, making very careful, um, uh, making absolutely sure that all my solder joints were perfect, and they were. And then I just simply plugged it in, connected my stepper drivers to one side, connected my limit switches to the other, and it worked perfectly. Um, I mean, it is it really is amazing when you consider how inexpensive the Arduino Uno is, the fact that Gerbil is free, uh, that you can plug all this stuff in, and it runs a CNC machine flawlessly, even with the big stepper drivers or the big stepper motors and the big stepper drivers. It, it just, it works great. So I couldn't be happier. And like I said, I'm going to put a link to uh, Ron's Tindy page so you can go and check out both the, the, the DB25, which I think really works well if you have a CNC machine which requires connection with a parallel port, or if you've purchased one of those Chinese CNC machines like the 3040 or the 6040, uh, those type of machines where all the electronics are in a box with a parallel port uh, connector on the outside. This would work fine for that. You just got to make sure that you solder quality joints. We all like quality joints, don't we? Anyway, um, so that, that takes care of pretty much uh, how I was able to make the Arduino Uno work. Um, and the other issue that I mentioned earlier that I said I would explain is... Um, I had a couple of questions that came up about false triggers to my limit switches because apparently it's fairly common that limit switches which are wired to an Arduino Uno and using Gerbil can suffer from false triggers. In other words, the noise, the electromagnetic uh, noise that's put out by the uh, spindle and the stepper motors can actually cause problems in the wiring of the limit switches and give a false trigger. So you're in the middle of carving something and all of a sudden the machine thinks that one of the limit switches has been triggered and it will stop. And that can be, that can ruin a job. To prevent the limit switches from sending false signals, I have to beef up the circuitry. And the way I did that was by using electrolytic Capacitors. This is a 0.47 UF capacitor, and 
it has a positive leg and a negative leg. And the positive leg is simply inserted into the appropriate uh, screw terminal where uh, each of the uh, limit switch wires, positive wires, connect. So one port is assigned to the z-axis limit switch, another port is for the y-axis limit switch, and another port is for the x-axis limit switch. So three capacitors and positive leg into each of those terminals and then the negative legs are connected to the common ground. And by doing this, I'm able to protect the uh, limit switch wiring from interference from the spindle and from the stepper motors. And so far it's worked really well. I haven't had any issues with false triggers that would normally um, stop a job midway or you know at some point during the car. And that's a disaster. Um, so now I've also got a lot of inquiries about my intention to offer plans for this machine. And in truth, there really isn't going to be like a dimension set of blueprints for this machine. Um, a CNC machine is really just a collection of parts that you bolt together. However, there are some components like the uh, end plates, uh, the z-axis plate, uh, x-axis plate, the gantry sides. Those are parts you have to fabricate. And for those, I am going to include a dimensioned cut plan so that you can make your own uh, plates. And you can make these out of either Baltic birch like I've done, or you could, I suppose you could use MDF if you wanted to, although I don't recommend it. Uh, you can also uh, fabricate them out of aluminum if you have that ability. Uh, but the main part of this package that I'm going to offer is going to be a, uh, an instruction manual. And this manual will feature step-by-step -step instructions, fully illustrated with text description, on how to assemble all the parts. And obviously that means I will have to include a list of all the parts so that you know what to get. And I will also include a wiring diagram for the electronics. And um, I'm in the process of putting all this stuff together. It's the, the assembly instructions for the machine are mostly complete. I'm just going back in and doing a little bit of editing and, and uh, revising that as it, as it goes along. And uh, I've, I'm pretty much almost finished with the wiring diagram as well. But there is going to be some slight tweaks to that as well. So once all that's finished, I'm hoping this is going to be by mid-summer, so like July, maybe August, I should have all this completed and I will be able to offer it. I will also uh, make available, I'm, I'm planning on a two-part video. One Part one will show the entire assembly of the mechanical structure. Part two will show the basics of the electronics. And I'm not going to really get into detail about how I uh, wire each step of uh, the electronics together. I'm just going to kind of give an overview. And of course, you know, with all this stuff, there's going to be a disclaimer with regard to uh, the electronics and the voltages that are involved because if you're not really confident in your ability to wire up something like this, I want to encourage you to seek out a uh, qualified electrician who is certified in this type of electronics uh, so that you don't get yourself in trouble because we are talking voltages that are high enough to injure, kill, or burn down your house. So, um, yeah, that's basically uh, everything I wanted to talk about in this update. And uh, I'm going to sign off for now and get back to the guitars that I'm currently working on. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to update you on some of those projects in the next episode. So until then, take care and we'll see you soon.